Hey all, let's talk about how to apply for Dr. Lockham jobs, a step-by-step -step guide. This video has been highly requested by a lot of my viewers and they are hoping that I can cover step-by-step, -step, um, you know, just guide and offer you some tips as well on how to secure yourself a job as a Lockham doctor in Australia. If you're new here, my name is Anna. Thank you for my returning subscriber and thank you for always keeping it here. So, are you a doctor and you're just looking for a flexible and a rewarding locum work? Have you tried some locums before? Are you thinking of trying a locum um, gig somewhere for various reasons? This video is specifically for you and it's also for other health professionals that are always also looking into getting into the Lockham space and I will be offering my candid advice on what to do and offer step by step, um, step by step guide on how to um, approach this subject of uh, finding Lockham jobs. Lockham jobs are quite interesting uh, for various reasons. I've been involved, um, I've done a few Lockham gigs here and there, and I must say they offer quite significant financial freedom because obviously the, 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 the pay is, 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 is way, way better. And, um, and uh, no wonder that you, my viewer, are actually thinking of going into this space. You may have various reasons and I'll probably mention them as we go along. You may have various reasons and uh, some of the reasons that have been cited by people that are really, really looking into getting into the Lockham gigs is obviously for financial freedom, but also for other reasons like some people may just want to travel around Australia and as they travel around Australia they want to work and raise the funds that they need for travel and I find that really really something that is is exciting because then you have the financial capacity to do what you love and um, and still provide the much needed financial care in the communities that you travel through so Step number one, when you're thinking about, you know, when you're going or looking into going into the Lockham space um, is preparation. And, and I've always said preparation is key if you want to be successful in whatever you want to do. Preparation or preparing yourself and setting strategies in place, putting uh, measures in place to ensure that you're successful are key. First and most important thing is to ensure that your medical registration and your license is up to date for the job that you're applying to do. So say you want to do a GP role, or say you want to do a medical registrar role or an ED registrar role, it is important to ensure that your, set, your medical registration is actually up to date and ensure that your license is, 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 is up to date. Number two, as part of the preparation stage, you will need to tailor your CV and your cover letter for the job that you're looking for. Say you're looking for a medical registrar job, obviously you need to understand the job description of what you'll be expected to do. Check that your skill set is up to task on the role that you're going in. If you're working in a rural ED, remember that you may be required to do some extra skills suitable for that role in the rural GP or rural ED space. So it's very important at that point in time to tailor your CV. And I always tell this to my colleagues, especially people that have not worked or lived in Australia for a long time, CVs everywhere, not only in Australia, you need to always ensure that you're redoing your CV over and over dependent on the job that you're applying for. Long are the days when you had one CV that you would send here, 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 and here. It is important to ensure that your CV is tailored to the role that you're applying for. And you also probably may need a cover letter for that job as well. Three, you need to prepare your documents, your relevant documents and your certifications. So look, maybe, you know, they need your degree cert, maybe they need your, um, your fellowship paperwork, or they probably need your SCLS, your trauma courses for ED, your mandatory reporting um, for, you know, for if you're working childcare, you're working with children checks, um, those important documentations that will be found on your application form or on your requirements before you apply, ensure that you're collecting those things, you're putting them you know, in PDF forms ready to attach if you're attaching online or ready to send uh, if you're attaching via email and all that. Um, that's also will be key even as you prepare to apply for these jobs. Number four, and I must insist, is if you're hoping to get into the Lockham gig and it's the first time and you're not sure how it's done, you may need to use a, a Lockham agency 
and you may need to to find some job opportunities there are various various um uh, local agencies um I'm, I'm not going to 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 labor you guys with some of the ones that i know you can just you know search your engine search and look for the local agencies around you and the reason why i say you need to research them is don't just research a name research their reviews talk to your colleagues and ask them who have you used in the past what what benefits did they offer you um and 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 and, and be, be be careful because some people may just be doing it so that they can get you know their referee fee and stuff like that look to ask and ask the important questions um i mean how is the support for this role um ask about you know you know things like if you needed to terminate um your role at that point in time ask the local agencies you know how and and not only the agency the person that you'll be dealing with find out are they friendly are they receptive um to emails and stuff like that to phone calls are they available to help you if you're in need and stuff like that so ask your friends um and people that have locumed uh, before ask them who did you use what was your experience um did they support you with things like you know um uh, uh you know things that i entail locum because you realize you know the structure of locum may be different from your payg job and stuff like that important important to do that the other way that you can also try and find the jobs remember it is within your networks you know um you may actually hear friends saying oh i just came from a locum gig somewhere and they're looking for extra people it's a nice place or oh, this is a contact that you can contact and you can actually get you know uh jobs locum jobs directly with the hospital I have used this again in the past. I have approached hospitals and I've said, "Look, this is my availability." And some of those hospitals have worked in them before. So you can maybe winding up on your regular job and you're looking into going locum and there's an opportunity and you can just run it to, uh, you know against them and go like, "I am looking for a locum gig. Would you would you consider uh, taking me on board directly and you can negotiate directly with the hospital and sometimes that may work out you know for you really well as well okay so that's part of the preparation um after you prepare remember this the application process so depending on what you've decided to go with whether it's the hospital directly or whether it's your agency remember both of them will require you to provide your cv which you'll already have done and ready to go they will may have some of them not some of them actually a lot of them will have their online application process that you may need to fill up and attach the important documents as i've already mentioned you may need to provide your documents your certifications and sometimes you may be involved you may be um, asked to present for an interview whether a phone interview or an in person interview and that's when i always say if you're going in for an interview again you need to prepare for that interview if you have not watched you know i have a video that i talk about tips on how to ace your interviews look out for those tips as well and position yourself really well that you pass your interviews on first go you make an impression and obviously then you get the job and start your locum gig and then the other important thing that i must say when you're looking for locum jobs is remember to look at your contract i know contracts can be long they can be wordy and all but i have learned to find read my contracts look for the important clauses the important clauses like let's say if you needed to terminate your contract say you went in you were not happy with them what's the amount of time that you can terminate your contract with what are some of the clauses in there that would be disadvantageous to you if you needed to terminate a contract again in there in the contract look keenly because in there it will sort of say um you know some job that are, you know people put them across as a house officer which is really for me i find house officer quite a vague title job title so look at the finer details and see what will your responsibilities and roles be and feel confident enough based on your skills and your previous experience that you can undertake that job don't take up an ed job that maybe you know you're the only one that's covering a night shift or you're the only one that's expected to do like let's say a gp locum job that you're supposed to work in the gp practice and be on call at the hospital 
if that's not what you want. If it is what you want because you want to get your skill set improved and stuff like that, then well and good, that would work out for you. But if you're somebody that, you know, you know, like, let's say like me, I want to go and just, you know, uh, work during the day in the evening, go out with my family and friends and stuff like that, then at that point in time, the fine tuning or the fine reading will reveal to you that this is not the role that you want. And it will give you an opportunity to reassess yourself and say, this is what I want and this is not what I want. And I always insist this because people have been caught up really badly in contracts where they go in and they realize this is not what I signed for. The support is not there. The patient safety is not there. Somebody is likely, you know, to something is likely to go wrong and I will be held accountable and responsible for this. You want to be in a role where you feel fast, your skill set is good, and you also feel like if you needed support, you know who will come in to support you and you know that the support is available. So very important. And I always tell the people, because I have a few people that I reference for lock-up jobs, I tell them, especially the young RMOs that are starting out, I always tell them, choose a role that you know you'll be supported because I know your capabilities, I know what you can do, and you also know what you cannot do. So choose a role that you will feel very supported. And if you go in and you realize this is not what you signed up for, be smart enough to look for an exit plan so that is part of the application process very very important the other thing that i must mention is your consideration look your consideration in uh, choosing a contract or choosing or looking at a contract or choosing an agency and stuff like that the one important thing that I find is there are some lock-up gigs that come in blocks and then there are some lock that are like a few days of the week. Say you want to lock them around the city so that you are going back and forth from your house and that you're filling in as a lock and also your regular job. Then in that point in time, you'll not be looking for a lock that's a block. You'll be looking for a lock that you can fill in specific days here and there. Or alternatively, you may be wanting to say, look, I want to work for one whole month or three whole months so that I can raise this specific amount of money because you have a need that you want to meet or something like that. Then at that point in time, then you can, you know, get time off your regular job or if you resign or something like that or you're in between jobs, you can then decide, oh, I'm going to go for three months lock -up. So part of the considerations you need to do is ask yourself what's the duration or the amount of time that I want to lock them, okay? I want to lock them for two weeks, I want to lock them for three months, I want to lock them for a whole year, okay? And then ask yourself, what's the location that I'm comfortable in working? Look, am I going to an MM3, MM4, MM5, MM6, MM7? I, am I wanting just to stay around the city and do things around the city? So location, you need to consider where you want to work. Is it a place that you've, you love working and you want to go back? I do have a special place that I like to keep always going back. If it's that that you want, then you already know where you want to go. And sometimes you may actually, because you've worked there before, you may not actually need an agency, you know, so you may actually negotiate on your own that way. The other important thing to consider is your insurance, your um, indemnity, uh, indemnity, and sometimes even your public liability insurance. Important to think about these things because depending on the role that you're going to, you may obviously need a specific amount of cover and also for the skill and things that you'll be doing. If you'll be doing more high risk um, uh, role and you know theater, cutting and stuff like that, you probably obviously need to prepare your insurance to be um, to be well enough for for the job that you're applying for. Next thing you need to look at is obviously the pay rate and the benefits that come with your lock-up gig. So various jobs offer different pay grades, but generally, obviously, lock-up jobs because a lot of them either will pay via your ABN, which is your business like like a business structure or sole trader. Or some of them, I know some that may actually still pay via PayYG, but a lot of them will pay you um, with your ABN number. And because of that, remember your legal and your tax implications are you will need to set aside a certain amount of money for your uh, PayYG and then your taxes. And then obviously you need to remember to put in some money for your superannuation and stuff like that. So um, look at um, the, the, the pay rate, putting in mind all those things and look at the benefits. Some local places will 
provide you accommodation and if you actually have a family I've, I've locked and in places that have been so gracious enough good enough to provide me accommodation not only for myself but also for my family who may actually you know come visit or or if it's during school holidays and i've decided we are going there for school holidays then they can actually stay with me and stuff like that so there are some benefits like that. Some other benefits may be like travel, you know, they may provide you your tickets to and fro, they may reimburse you for fuel, some places may actually give you a car to use, you know, they may actually provide you with um, the funds to do, you know, um, hire a car to use and stuff like that. So look at the benefits available and um, look at how much you're getting and decide based on that what you want. The other thing you need to consider is the traveling and the accommodation. Again, I've already mentioned that. Uh, see whether you're organizing your own accommodation. If you're organizing your own accommodation, remember to consider that in the pay rate that you're getting. And also if you're using your own car and fuel and stuff like that, also remember to put that into consideration. And I've already mentioned about um, when you're considering your contract, remember to look about the important little things like cancellation, termination of your contract, because life happens, you know. You may be wanting to stay there for three months, but then you get an emergency and, you know, some of us, you know, you know, you may have to, you know, like, let's say, go back home uh, or um, cancel for whatever reason that you're not happy with, you know, the, the, car, the contract and stuff like that. You need to remember what are the important clauses in your contract, you know, things that, you know, will, will have implications on, on your pay, will have implication on your um, reputation as well. And also things that um, either your agencies may need to help you sort out and stuff like that. As I almost come towards the end of this uh, video, I want to talk about some of the tips that I have found helpful. So if you're somebody that has never locked before and you're thinking of going into this lock space, part of the step-by-step -step guide for me is to provide you with some of the tips that are important. And I've mentioned some of these things, so I'll be nice and quick. Tailor your CV, tailor your CV to the role and ensure you're not fitting in shoes that are too large for you or too tight for you. So don't take a, a task that is too, you know, too, um, you need more skills or one that you, you know, just vary and, 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 and determine what's best for you. And then again, I've talked about, you know, your client, your agency and, and, and how you choose, you know, your client reputation and stuff like that. And then clarify your terms and conditions that will come in your contract. I've already talked to you about how to prepare for your interviews. And importantly, 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 stay organized and communicate. Communicate, communicate, communicate. By now, you've already known and you've heard me talk about this communication thing over and over again. Remember to communicate with your agency, with the hospital, with your team members. Communicate, communicate, communicate. At every step of the way, if you're not sure about something, write it in an email, you know, follow it up with a phone call. And um, using all these skills, I'm sure you're going to land yourself, you know, that much needed uh, locum. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you've locum before and you have a tip that you want to add or something that I've missed, by all means um, comment. But importantly, so like, share, subscribe for more content like this. And I'll be sharing another topic on locuming. Thank you for keeping it here.